Okay, so in this video, I'm going to do something slightly different, uh, still image processing, but this time much closer to ourself, or in fact, our atmosphere, as, as opposed to the previous deep sky objects that I've processed and looked at. So a quick point about the northern lights or aurora. With our naked eye, unless we are high up in the northern hemisphere, we can just make out sometimes a murky green or even red light or band. Um, and this is what your uh, eyes pick up um, by default. However, with your camera, um, your camera is able to pick out a lot more detail and colours. So a lot of people um, who do see some of these bands or green haze um, of the aurora, if they were to use a camera instead, the camera would enhance, absorb and capture a lot more detail uh, than we can with our own eyes. So if you think about it, um, your optic nerve is processing everything we see instantly and then relaying that information or data to our brains. And that allows us to see the image that we are seeing right now. And this all happens in a microsecond, if that. So a camera pointing at the night sky for 15 seconds can record so much more light than our eyes can and the aurora and the, therefore the colors become a lot more visible and a lot more vibrant as well. So in this video using Lightroom, I'm gonna walk through the process um, that took me from this raw image, which was straight off the camera, to the final image, which is this. Um, and I'll, I'll take you through step-by-step step of the settings and the different sliders and attributes that are changed. Um, and hopefully at the end of it, you'll be able to understand how we, we touch things up a little bit within Lightroom, just to enhance the colors uh, a little bit more. We're not actually adding more colors into the image or, or, or painting more colors into the image. Uh, we're just teasing out the layers of colors um, and effects that are already captured by the camera. So the original shot, um, which was this one, it was captured with a Canon 800D unmodified DSLR. And I used a Samyang 14mm lens. It's a single shot image with a 13 second exposure time, an ISO setting of 1600 and an aperture setting of f2.8. Okay, so I've loaded my image into Adobe Lightroom Classic. Um, so this is a raw file. Uh, straight off the camera, no press processing or anything on it yet. And the first thing I'm going to do on the right hand side here is scroll down and I'm going to choose the correction. Um, I'm going to choose my, my camera lens um, and Adobe will know the measurements, etc. and the distortion against the lens and it will adjust it for that. So Samyang 14mm uh, 2.8 was what I used. Okay, so We've got a lot of um, night sky at the top here, which is nice. Um, however, one of the first things to think about is the, the, the composition or the, 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 the area, I suppose, that we want everybody to draw their eyes into. And um, not so much the night sky we're interested in, but certainly the aurora itself um, and the church in the middle here and this uh, area or small area of, of woodland. So we're gonna crop it uh, just using the cropping tool. And yes, we can click and drag, et cetera, to what we want. Um, but for this image, I'm just gonna choose a 16 by nine crop. That'll set the area to that specific aspect. And I'm just gonna drag that area down here. So we're gonna be losing a little bit of the night sky, which is fine. Um, but there's kind of this yellow um, band or what may, might be a path going through the center of the image. And I want to try and capture that from the left side. So your eye is drawn along here up to the church and then into the aurora itself. So I'm um, just going to crop that out and click done. Okay, so now we'll see what, what we're going to actually, um, the area, I suppose, of the image that we're going to be improving. Okay, so first off, let's start with the white balance, which is currently set as shot. Um, however, I'm gonna adjust the temperature here, just slightly warm up the image a little bit. Um, this will also start seeing the, the, the colors of the aurora enhancing a little bit, becoming a little bit stronger, becoming a little, little bit warmer itself. Um, so I guess with uh, you know a lot of processing, a lot of images, a lot of it is down to personal choice. 
Obviously, if we go up there, it is way, way too warm, um, completely blows it out. If we go too low, everything's blue, lose all the colour. Um, so let's just try the temperature around there. That looks nice so far. And then we've got a little bit of um, green in the aurora, which is great. And obviously the front of this, this grass or field area. So I'm just going to add a little bit of tint, just a very, very small uh, several stops or several steps just to bring a bit of that greenness out for the time being. Okay, so uh, on to the other sliders that we've got and uh, the contrast slider here. Um, this is one of the, the most useful or, or I guess fundamental sliders that we're going to be using. And, and this basically this changes the, the contrast between the darkest um, in the mid, the darkest midtones, and the lightens the lightest areas of the image or the midtones. So, in an aurora image, um, many of the the midtones are the actual aurora itself, as opposed to the blacks or the whites on the image. And again, personal choice. But if we start pushing us to the right hand side here, you can see the night sky darkens. And the colours from the actual aurora start showing even more. So we're getting those reds and yellows. Whereas if we remove, reduce the contrast, um, we totally blow out the aurora itself. And it looks like a daytime picture um, rather than a nighttime with the aurora. So let's push that contrast right up. Again, personal choice on this one of how much, uh, how dark you want your sky, I guess, or the area, or, or how much you want those midtones to come out of the aurora. So for this one, for the time being, we'll, we'll, we'll just push it right to the top. So the next um, slide we're going to talk about is, is the clarity. Um, and this adds contrast into the midtones itself without bringing in too much uh, noise. So we've got a, a dark image as it is. Um, 1600 is not that, 1600 ISO is not that high in ISO, um, but it is, it is enough to start generating some noise off the sensor. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll use the clarity to help bring in out some contrast without, as I said, adding more noise. So again, the Aurora colors fall into the midtones within the image. Um, so if we boost this clarity up to 100, again, as I said before, you can see it brings in too much noise. So not a subtle change, I guess, but, but we still want enough, um, clarity adjustment in there to again bring out the colors from the mid the, the midtone colors for the aurora um, it also helps pop out i suppose the the stars in the night sky um, it is a nighttime image we're not just looking at the aurora so anything we can do to enhance the the stars themselves um, is only a good thing so in this instance because we want to take the most of the uh, the silhouettes will push the shadows right up to 100. So the highlights, uh, or the highlight slider, sorry, um, this increases the luminosity of the brightest parts of the image. Um, so this one, again, what, what I'm gonna do here is actually slightly drop the, the highlights. So I've been using the, the, the vibrance and the temperature and the tint uh, to bring out these colors, um, but I just wanna slightly drop off um, some of the brightest parts again, so it doesn't look too fake, it doesn't look too bright or, or overexposed or the contrast increased too much. So I'm going to counteract that a little bit by reducing the highlights in the image. You've got to remember with these at the minute, because we're not using a mask or anything, it is having an effect on the entire image itself and not just the aurora. Okay, so let's actually use a mask here. So we're going to mask out um, the field at the bottom here. Um, so within Lightroom, we've got masks on the right. I'm going to use a linear gradient and just click and drag from the bottom. And you can see the red shows the actual mask of where things will be affected. Um, and it is a gradient, so it's very, very solid at the bottom and kind of blending into the actual uh, trees of the church itself. So from here, um, Lightroom then gives us the, the ability to control the effects of the colors or the, the contrast just for that gradient. And I'm just gonna remove the overlay so that the mask is still in place, but, but we'll actually now see what it's affecting. And I'm gonna reduce the, the temperature 
on the mask a little bit. So if I go all the way down the bottom, you can see it's very, very green. I will turn it into a yellow. Um, I just want to give the slight effect that it is actually a field. I know it is the you know, night time, obviously, but we can't see it as much. We're just going to reduce the temperature a little bit um, to kind of give us a little bit more um, aspect of, of feel that it is a green field where you're looking into. And then the tint as well, again, we can go all the way to the right, that'll, that'll add a red tint or a pink tint into it. However, for this mask, I'm going to reduce it um, just to pull a little bit more green into the foreground. So it's not like a complete dark image that we're looking at, except for the Aurora. Okay, so um, that's the only mask I'm going to use. I'm going to click done on that. And the next thing I want to do is just slightly adjust the tone curve of the image. And this will help darken the night sky um, and darken a little bit more of the actual silhouette of the trees themselves. So towards the bottom here, uh, I'm just going to put a slight kink in. So nothing too much, but as you can see, as I'm moving around, the, the, the night sky is darkening a little bit more. So just a subtle change, but that, that gives the effect um, of, of more blackness, I suppose, into the into the night sky. And we'll, we'll, we'll just leave that as that. As I said, just, just a subtle touch. OK, so I think the colours are looking good now. Um, but if we zoom in, um, we can see in the night sky, there was a lot of noise. And obviously that noise um, moves down into the actual aurora itself. Um, now, unfortunately, because it's a, a nighttime image, we needed a high ISO to be able to pick up the sensitivity or increase the sensitivity uh, to pick up all of the different colors. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a separate tool called Topaz Denoise, and this will allow us to reduce the noise that we see uh, within the image. OK, so let's load that up separately um, from photo edit in just the menus at the top here. Um, if they don't pick up on the video, apologies, but I'm just gonna load this into Topaz Denoise and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so the, the image is loaded up um, and you can see what Topaz does is it gives us like a split screen. So on the left-hand side, you can see the before effect and on the right-hand side, the after effect of the noise reduction. And if I move the slider to the left or the, the vertical bar, you can see exactly what it's doing for us. Um, so I think this is very, very impressive. Uh, great tool for reducing the noise, especially on nighttime images. If we go up to the stars of the, the night sky at the top, what we see here on the left-hand side, very noisy, and the after effect on the right, it's very smooth and reduced that noise out. So there's a lot of videos out there um, about topaz to noise, um, but I just wanted to show you what we're using it for and why you use it. Um, there is a small number of settings, um, but we're just going to take the basic or the standard settings that it, it suggests. So it's automatically uh, calculated based on the image. Okay, so we just apply that and it'll save it. Uh, it'll close the noise down and it'll take us back into Lightroom automatically. Okay, and so we're, we're back into Lightroom, um, and we'll see this is our original file before we reduce the noise. If we zoom in, we can see all that noise in the night sky, which is not great. Um, but if we move on to the second file, which Topaz created for us, and we zoom in, we can see there's a lot less noise uh, within the night sky. And obviously that helps improve or increase the colours. Um, around the aurora itself, the foreground, the church, the trees, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, one last thing I'm just going to try a little bit. Um, I don't want to remove too much of the colours, but I'm just going to reduce the temperature slightly just to kind of you know, give that, that nighttime feel, I suppose, without affecting the vibrance of the saturation. I'm just going to reduce the temperature very, very slightly and it brings a little bit more kind of color of blue back into the night sky. You know, the, the, the space of the night sky is, is not 100% black. Um, so by reducing this temperature, um, it brings a bit more natural feel uh, back into the night sky.
Okay, so uh, I think we are done um, on this. Obviously, from here, you can just do a file export, um, reduce the, the, the file size or the file type um, from a TIFF or to a JPEG, whatever you might want to do next with the image. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video, then please uh, like the comment, like the video itself, leave a comment. Um, and if you like the other videos on my channel, then please consider subscribing as well. Um, thanks for your time. Hope you've enjoyed it. And see you next time.